my thousand subscriber mark in three months. How did you do it? I've been on YouTube for three years and I haven't reached that many subscribers. You claim you want to grow, but you don't have time to actually even engage with your audience. I would not have grown to over 10,000 subscribers by posting once a month. Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Small Talk Saturdays. During Small Talk Saturdays, we talk about various topics that are important to us on this channel. And as I mentioned in previous videos, for the month of June and July, I'm focusing specifically on YouTube related topics. So if you haven't checked any of those videos out, I highly suggest that you do. I have videos on how to start a YouTube channel and trust me, whether you are a beginner or a veteran, I'm sure there's a tip in that video that you can relate to that can help you. I also talked about some of my huge mistakes I've made as a small YouTuber. I've also talked about some new features on YouTube. Each Saturday has been jam packed with information. So I'm just gonna leave a link to some of the videos in my description box, check them out afterwards. Feel free to comment and let me know what you think. And yeah, I appreciate it. Huge shout out to everyone who has checked out these videos thus far. I've received so much good feedback. Like seriously, it makes me smile every time someone comments on those videos, especially because I am deviating from my normal content. So of course I'm like, uh, is anyone gonna watch? But every time some of you comment or DM me, I feel very validated in what I'm doing. So I just wanted to send a very heartfelt thank you to all of you. Now today's video, as you can tell by the title, is specifically about my journey on YouTube and how I have been able to acquire over 10,000 subscribers. One of the main questions people ask me is, how did you gain 10,000 subscribers so quickly? You've only been on YouTube for how long? I've been on YouTube for three years and I haven't reached that many subscribers. How did you do it? Like, I get a lot of different questions like this, mostly via DM. And I was just like, you know what? One day I'm gonna do a video just to address it and talk about my process and maybe hopefully it'll help somebody out. I started my channel originally on January 21st, 2019 and I reached the 10,000 subscriber mark April 18th of 2020. So technically it took a year and three months but still, it's not something I was expecting at all. That still felt pretty quick for me. And also based on what other people have told me, it happened quickly considering it's my first year on YouTube. So I was like, you know what? Let me share what I know. Let me share the exact tactics I use to grow my channel to this point because at this point now I'm actually approaching 12K. I'm super stoked about that. Woo, I need to do like a little surprise giveaway for that because I'm just so excited. But yeah, I'm approaching 12K now and I figure I may as well share and I wanna break it down for all of you step by step. If you're watching this right now, you've probably watched other videos on how to grow a channel already, but this video is a little bit different because I am going to be citing a lot of my real life examples and I suggest you grab a notepad because you might wanna note something down that you see in this video. Literally, it's like I'm giving you the blueprint. <laughs> I'm literally giving you the blueprint to how I grew my channel. So definitely make sure you watch until the very end. Look y'all, I know some of you feel like, uh, I have been at this point where I've been growing my channel and it's just not happening. I'm stuck at 100 subscribers. I'm stuck at 1,000 subscribers. Trust me, I've been there. I know what that feels like. I was just feeling stuck a few weeks ago. I still have my moments where I'm like, uh, am I gonna make it to this amount? Like, am I gonna reach people? Am I even affecting the change that I really wanna see? I feel those things too. And those feelings are sometimes valid, you know? But other times, a lot of those feelings are rooted in self-doubt. And so I'm hoping that through this video, we can eradicate some of those negative feelings and hopefully have you feeling positive at the end of this video. Look, if I can do it, y'all can do it too. I'm not saying that you're going to guaranteed reach 10,000 subscribers in one year just because of this video. I'm not saying that. I'm definitely not saying you're gonna have the same outcome as I did. However, what I am saying is, if you follow some of these steps that I've taken, I'm sure you are on the right track to carving out a successful path for your YouTube channel. So if you're ready to see how I grew my YouTube channel to 10,000 subscribers basically in one year, keep on watching. So the very first thing I did when it came to starting my YouTube channel is I didn't start. <laughs> I actually started outside of YouTube. I made an Instagram account for my hair page. It's a hair page called Is That Your Hair? Same as my YouTube name. By the way, that's something that you should really consider like when you are creating a YouTube channel and if you are creating other platforms, I think it should all be in sync. It should all be aligned. It should all be synonymous. It 
should be the same name. I'm not saying it has to be, but I think it's helpful if you do have the same name, especially now if you're just now starting out at zero. It just makes people easier to find you and it just helps with branding. But for me, I was hesitant, so I started a hair Instagram. I was posting probably like once a month, once every few weeks. And it wasn't until the end of 2018 where I decided to take my Instagram seriously, post consistently, and that's when I started seeing results of people following me. And that's when I started to become more confident. And I was like, you know what? This YouTube channel thing, it just might be a go. So that's when I decided to commit to a date. I think that's the main thing people need to do. Once you know that you wanna start, set a date and stick to it. My date was January 21st, 2019, MLK weekend. It was a Monday. And that's when Is That Your Hair was born. Now the next thing I did, after that, the second step was making sure I just had basic tools. For me, I knew how important lighting was, so I needed a big window. And actually, this is the window I was in front of for my very first video. As you can see here, I was a little further away, definitely feeling very anxious and shy, a little bit timid. But I did the video, I made it through, and I received a lot of great feedback. It's very important that your video is visible and clear, and people can see you. You don't need a super expensive camera to do that. You can use your phone. I had actually just gotten an iPhone at that time, so I used that, and I still use my iPhone at this point. I do wanna invest in a camera at some point, but right now I'm good with my phone. And I just don't want people to prevent themselves from starting just because they don't have a camera. I think the sooner you start, and the sooner you can figure out what is going to work for your channel, the sooner you can build a following, build up your engagement, the better off you will be. So don't wait. Take the tools that you have, set a date, and start. Now the third thing I did that was super important was that I promoted the hell out of my channel. I was already promoting on Instagram here and there before I started, but once that channel link dropped, literally a good third of my Instagram following went to my YouTube page and was watching and commenting. And from there, I decided to take it up a notch and get more personal, and I started sending DMs like multiple DMs a day. I can't even tell you how many. I sent so many that Instagram was like, oh, you can't send any more comments for the next 24 hours. <laughs> Something like that. I was like, oh no, wait, come back. It was fine. I was back on like the next hour. But be careful with that method because you don't want to send too many at one time. But I did receive responses. Like a good 50% would respond and I think from those that 50%, a good maybe 20, 25% would subscribe to me. So that was awesome. I was like, oh wow, this is actually taking me somewhere. I think people like a personal touch, especially if you don't come across too pushy. This is an example of one of the messages that I sent and it seemed to suffice for that time. I was also asking if they had a business too so that it kind of seemed like, okay, you know, we can support each other. Of course, this is not gonna be everyone's method because not everyone wants to take that type of grassroots approach. But for me, it was super important that I got my channel out there and I know how oversaturated YouTube is. For me, you really have to just work your ass off <laughs> to be seen. And that was part of the work that I felt like I had to do. I felt like I needed to use Instagram to work and get people onto YouTube and it really worked out for me. I was able to reach my 1,000 subscriber mark in three months and I definitely think a big part of it was all of the engaging I was doing on Instagram and on YouTube. But I'll get to the engagement part later. The fourth thing that I did was that I joined Facebook groups. If y'all are sleeping on Facebook groups, I'm gonna need you to pause this video, look up a group within your niche and join right now. I definitely have my girl Shining Star who's within the hair niche. I have her to thank because she's the one that literally gave me a list of Facebook groups to join within the wig community. I joined all of them and I just started posting. And from there, having that engagement has been super helpful in terms of becoming visible on YouTube. Even recently, one of the admins in the Facebook group that I'm in asked me to do a takeover on her Facebook group where I'm literally just promoting my channel all day long. And that was very successful because people were seeing my work. People know that she does these takeovers every so often. And so people were excited to like follow me and subscribe and see what I was about. And I was also doing things to help engage the community. So I just think Facebook groups are an excellent way to really talk to people one-on-one -on -one and comment and see what's going on within your niche. So I just highly recommend that you start joining Facebook groups because 
I know that definitely helped people see me on YouTube. The sixth thing that I made sure of, sixth thing was making sure I had good lighting and good audio. Now I touched upon this in my how to start a YouTube channel video. Make sure that you check that video out because I swear part one and part two dropped so many gems and it's so helpful, especially as a new YouTuber. In that video, I actually showed you what it looks like when my ring light is off and it looks terrible. <laughs> If you don't have adequate lighting, people are gonna click off your video, point blank, period. And you want to keep people on your video because that helps YouTube see that you're keeping people on their platform. More people on their platform watching means more people watching potential ads, which means more money in YouTube's pocket. You see what I'm saying? It's all cyclical. So make sure people can see you, make sure people can hear you. I don't use an external mic. I think the mic from my phone suffices, especially because I'm in an empty room right now. But if you are in a different space, you might wanna consider getting an external mic, maybe one that can clip on, or maybe even a boom mic, which is a mic that extends out from a camera. I'm pretty sure they have boom mics for cell phones too. If I find something on Amazon, I will definitely link it in the description box so that you can look into purchasing it. Now the next thing I did that was really important for me was that I I made sure that my videos were optimized for search. Honestly, this could be a whole video in itself. Basically, there is a term called SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. And what that means is how likely is your content going to be found in search? How many times? Where does it rank when someone searches certain terms? So part of making sure your video is optimized has to do with your titles, it has to do with your description box, and it has to do with your tags. Thumbnails are also super important as well. People look at that and that is what draws them to click. But as far as making sure that you are ranking in the search engine, you have to pay attention to those titles, description, and tags. When you are crafting your title, there should be keywords in that title that you can also put in your description box so that you can also put in your tags because that increases the likelihood of your video ranking higher in search. YouTube changed the album a few years ago to where videos that appeared at the top weren't just videos with the most views. That's dead and gone. Videos that rank towards the top are the videos that have a higher watch time, right? And your watch time is how long people are watching your videos. Those videos rank higher and videos that are actually optimized for search. You have to make it easy for your video to be found. YouTube has millions of people on the platform. What are you gonna do to help your video be found and what are you gonna do to get people to click on your video? Those are things you have to think about when it comes to search engine optimization. There is an app called TubeBuddy that I use that definitely helps with like checks and balances just to make sure that I'm doing everything I need to do to make sure that I am optimized for a search. If you're interested in TubeBuddy, I'll leave a link for that and definitely search up videos on it because so many people talk about TubeBuddy. It's a really great tool. Now the next few things I'm gonna talk about relate specifically to engagement. I actually just did an entire video on engagement and how to garner high quality engagement on YouTube, on Instagram, on multiple platforms. I basically crafted a rubric to help gauge the quality of one's engagement. Please check out that video. That video is so pivotal. Like I'm really proud of that video because I really break it down for people. Some people don't take engagement seriously and I think it's an issue. I'm gonna make sure I link that in the description box because y'all need to check that video out. But I'm gonna speak on what I did in short as far as growing my channel to 10,000 subscribers. I kept my engagement super high. Literally, as soon as someone commented on my video, I am commenting back as soon as I can. If I knew that I wouldn't have time to comment right away, I would just the time of when I post the video. You see what I'm saying? You have to make time for that engagement. A lot of people want to say that they don't have the time to respond back to comments. What are you talking about? You have 20 comments on your videos. You don't have time to respond? I'm really confused by that. I don't get it. You're a new YouTuber. You claim you want to grow, but you don't have time to actually even engage with your audience. That's wild to me. And that's a mindset that needs to change. I see it with larger YouTubers as well. And I understand that as you get bigger, it becomes harder to respond back to everybody. So my expectation doesn't revolve around responding to everyone per se at, at that level, but at least try to respond to most people. At least do things like go live where you can like talk to your community one-on-one -on -one. because it's not just subscribers, you guys. You are building relationships with actual people and that's what matters. And for me, I did a really great job of building relationships with people who were interested in my videos. 
I respond to people. I use people's names. I respond in a thoughtful manner. And these are all things that I highlight in my engagement video that I posted last week. Even when you're saying thank you to someone, maybe sometimes get a little extra. Say thank you so much, I really appreciate you. Say wow, thank you, I noticed that you commented on my last video. Thanks for coming back to check out my channel. You know, something like that to show that you are actually invested in the people that choose to watch your channel. Remember, there's no entitlement here. People don't have to watch your channel. They don't, they choose to and that choice is super important and you should not take that for granted i'm telling you these small efforts they sound very minute but this is what builds community and this is what fosters loyalty so the next thing i did alongside with engaging with people watch my videos i also collaborated with people in my niche my particular niche is the wig community and we're a pretty tight-knit community a lot of people know other people who do wig reviews so that's been really awesome like since i've started youtube i've made a lot of associates and i've even made close friends through youtube and it's really awesome and we really look out for each other and over time you start wanting to collab with different people like for me for the christmas holiday season i collaborated with some of my close youtube friends during that time but as far as growing your channel i know for me for example when i collaborated with one of my good YouTube friends, Brittany, who has a very large channel. That was helpful because a lot of people that would not have noticed me saw my channel. And thus they came over, they saw on Brittany's word, to come see what I was about. And the best part about collaborating with her at that time was that it was completely genuine. We had already been developing a friendship anyway. So it just kind of happened naturally. That's the way collaboration should be. It shouldn't necessarily be so much like, oh, I see this person, I wanna get clout, let me ask to collab. Especially if you, yourself, are not putting out good content. I feel like it should start from a more genuine place where you actually have been developing some type of relationship with someone and you kind of go into some type of collaboration. I think that's worked the best for me. And the last thing I'll say when it comes to how I grew my channel, something that's really important is that I posted consistently and frequently. Yes, you can be consistent. You can post once a month, that's consistent. But will you grow? No. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you won't grow. And I'm not talking about the anom anomalies like um, Janelle May, I think that's her name, the girl with the van. I'm not talking people like her. I'm talking about the average YouTube channel that requires work from the offset in order to build to that foundation. I would not have grown to over 10,000 subscribers by posting once a month. I made sure I set a schedule for myself and I said, you know what, Gladys, you're going to post three times a week for the entire year. Now, there were definitely a few weeks where I posted twice. But I, I definitely stuck to my promise for the most part. And at this point, I definitely have like well over 150 videos. But I'm telling you, showing up consistently shows your subscribers that you are committed, that you're invested, and it allows them to see your growth over time. If you look at my videos from before, they don't look how my videos look now. You know what I'm saying? Like I've definitely gotten better with lighting with editing those things matter especially to a viewer and that brings me to my last point posting good content sometimes i see people who are doing different things they are being consistent and they are engaging but they're still wondering why they're not growing and sometimes it's because your content needs to be elevated you're taking pictures in a dark setting and you, your camera's smudged like no one wants to look at a picture like that on instagram you have to make sure your pictures are clear and people like people like clear aesthetically pleasing visuals visuals that communicate some type of story and i feel like with my videos at this point it keeps getting better and better every time i post a video i am determined to use the most of what i got like this little iphone i'm using i'm using it to the best of my ability right now because this is what i have you know what i'm saying like i'm using my basic tools and of course when i upgrade i upgrade but for right now i think i'm doing pretty damn well for just using the iphone and i think you can do the same make sure that your content is delivering value to people make sure your content is not empty whatever niche that you're in your content needs to speak to people and not just on a surface level it has to speak to them emotionally as well because emotion drives people to relate to you to connect to you to subscribe to you to follow you and if you're a business to buy from you so you have to think about these things when it comes to your content am i delivering good content be honest with yourself maybe ask a, a trustworthy friend to look over yourself to see if this would be considered high quality sometimes you need a second eye at the end of the day y'all youtube you have to treat it like a full-time job this is what has worked for me and this is what has 
made me you know successful in my own right no i don't have like tens of thousands of subscribers yet but trust me i'm on my way there why because I bust my ass, like literally. I treat it like a job and I have a full-time job. I'm a teacher full-time, nine to five, like that's what I do. But I also have made the time to put YouTube as a part of my life because I, I thoroughly enjoy it and I like communicating with you guys and I like giving you content that you love to see. It's interesting when people hit me up asking what they should do and I see and I'm just like, yo, you're you're honestly not doing enough. I hate to say it like that, but if you're not willing to put in the work, you're not going to grow. Posting three times a week is hard as <laughs> it's hard as hell when you already have another full-time job. You don't know how many times I did not sleep editing till like four in the morning, even though I have to wake up to go to work at 8 a.m. You see what I'm saying? It's sacrifice. So if you're not willing to make those sacrifices, then it's going to be harder for you to grow. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, y'all, these are some of the things that I did to grow my YouTube channel to 10,000 plus subscribers. I hope some of these tips have helped you. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. At the end of the day, I think the most important thing is to remember to be consistent, be frequent, post good content and also one thing I didn't touch on is to make sure you are showcasing your personality to the best of your ability I know for me if you watch some of my old videos who I am in those videos was not really who I was it was actually a mask it might have been anxiety that day it might have been fear that day it might have been nervousness but it wasn't Gladys you see what I'm saying and I think that is what keeps people subscribing when you are showing who you are if people like it, they'll subscribe. Make sure you check out my other videos from Small Talk Saturdays over here. You can click these right after this video. Thank you all so much for watching today's Small Talk Saturday. I cannot wait till next time. See you later. Bye.